Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, been busy working at it. I figured I'd give you guys a little update. Uh, I know it's been a while, but been whittling away at this thing. So nothing too crazy has been getting done, but just a lot of cleanup work and waiting on parts, just like everyone else on the planet, unfortunately. Um, already missed our first Friday night race of the year at the track, but. I'd rather have the truck be 100% ready to go than try and cobble something together and have to tear it all back apart and start all over again. So the juice will definitely be worth the squeeze at the end. And let me show you guys what I've got going on so far. So we go to the back of the truck here. And got the whole frame. Working on cleaning the whole thing up, grinding her down the bare metal going to be painting the whole thing still got to rip the fast off yet that's going to be going on the new tow rig which i'll be making a video for you guys soon another 6.5 project um got all the factory shock brackets cut out started to cut this cross member out and then i figured it was a good idea to wait to go get my pipe so i can keep the frame square i'm gonna have my bar about yeah and um Got adjustable shocks coming for the rear to hopefully help the jackrabbit hopping that was happening last time. Oh, hold on. I forgot to show you guys the best part. It's an 8 lug in the back too. Got the full float 14 bolt rear axle bolted in. And it's all, I sat there with the daggum screwdriver and a wire brush for a few hours. Got it all cleaned up. It looks a little dusty right now, but I promise it looks like glass. Um, got these big old drum brakes, but in order to fix that, I got this disc brake kit here. I went with the Rough Stuff kit. Um, simple, easy to do. I'll do a how-to video on that when the right brackets show up. I got the wrong brackets in this kit, so the right ones should be here any day now. I also got a spool for this thing. Shout out to Revolution Gear and Axle hooking me up with a 14 bolt spool for this bad Larry. As opposed to the old Lincoln locked setup in my semi float 14 bolt. Be nice to have a spool back there. Won't have to worry about that. Have the disc brakes. Both of those will help kind of curb the weight of this big monstrosity of rear axle. But. With the plans that I got for this truck, I needed the insurance policy of a full float 14 bolt. Parts are cheap and plentiful, and it's going to be plenty strong when I got some duels hanging off the back of this thing and hooking a sled to it. Um, and we can get back to this now. So, going to have this cut out. Going to have the bar up front here for my shocks. I'll have one back here. I'll know exactly where when I get the first bar mounted and I'm gonna have the fuel cell behind the axle to help with weight distribution and that'll tell me how far back the other bar is gonna come, probably about the middle. And then I'm gonna be making a hitch that goes back here, has bars that tie down to the axle. It'll be all braced in, be a real strong unit. And then off of those pads there, I was going to cut them off, but I'm going to keep those to uh, build my suspension lockouts off of with some plate here on the side of the frame and kind of box it under the frame and use some square tube down to the pads on either side there so I can get this thing jacked up, locked in for sled pulling. Um, Really, all the back is what's changed. The front's all... I showed you guys the front when it was done. Um, still haven't... There's no more parts to do on the front as of this point. I've been talking to a good friend, Nate Hills, one of the OGs, and he turned me on to a idler support from Super Steer, which I'm going to get one of those coming on Friday. And... Cognito makes a set of Pittman and Idler support brackets, 
which I will be getting those. And then this front end will be about as bulletproof as you can get for a GMT 400 truck. I don't know what else I could do. Um, so that'll be good on that part. Other than that, but it's on its own weight. It's it's a three quarter ton with a half ton heart. Um, that's really one of the big things. I also worked on some port matching on my exhaust manifolds to match my big old monster heads. Sitting right there, ready to go on. Um, just did some cleanup work, some port matching. Didn't want to have to fight exhaust leaks and need the exhaust flow to match these big old honkers here. So I did a little cleanup work on those. The next will be the intake manifold. I won't have to port match clear. Not quite near as much. The intakes were already fairly big. It'll just be a little bit of cleanup work on that guy there. But other than that, like I said, just waiting on parts to put that guy back together. Um, got the disc brake kit. Ooh, I guess I could update you with... A little bit of the sauce I got planned. Let's walk over to the toolbox here. This will kind of give you an idea of it. Got another bottle. Let me come down into the drawer here. Uh, it should be this one. Yeah, there it is. So those will be for the second engine. My backup. Or new one, I guess my engine now will be the backup but don't worry about these guys those are for gas stuff but i got two nx 15 300l solenoids now on top of my small nos so the small nos one will become the spool jet slash purge jet and i now have two of these bad larry's they're a 125 orifice so I'll be able to spray way more nitrous than should ever go into a 6.5. Well, if you ask anybody else, zero nitrous should go in a 6.5. So one of those might end up on the Duramax. We'll see. I definitely am putting one of the 15300s on this with a pretty healthy jet. I have jets all the way up to 136, so got plenty of room to party. Um... But other than that, that's about all the updates I got for the the guy thus far. Um, yeah, guys, I will definitely be making a install video on that disc brake setup. I've never done one on a 14 bolt, but it looks stupid simple. Um, it, I'm definitely excited to shed more weight off of this guy. Um, and have the benefit of disc brakes. I'm really excited how it's going. I know I've been a little slacking on posting on Instagram and YouTube here, but just life gets in the way sometimes, and I definitely want to keep you guys updated on it. One cool surprise here in the next day or two is I actually just did a podcast with Patrick on The Diesel Podcast talking about the truck. So guys, tune into that. Give that a listen. Um, of course, subscribe to him on YouTube. The, it's all I listen to all day at work is Diesel Podcasts. Either Patrick's or I listen to Paul and Chris on Diesel Performance Podcast. I was also on that one. Um, not trying to plug myself, but go ahead and give both of those a listen. Um, yeah, guys, stay tuned, and I will catch you on the next video. Like and subscribe.